But don't make no advertise where you cut away and like, well, guys, <laughs> <laughs> are you tired of those NFC? <laughs> are you not making money on FFPC? Well, Let me tell you about this. I have a yeah. new. <laughs> well, FFPC was stripping so low. <laughs> Hey, you know what? Show love. You know, be cool. Uh, you know? I, don't, I don't think we can ever do. I don't even think we have the logistics. But if we ever did like like a little like skits, yeah, that'd be funny. Like, <laughs> we should. We should. You know, little skits on every episode, just like <laughs> we used to do in uh in uh high in high school. Yeah, yeah, I know. I was gonna say it was Commercial. <laughs> just a, ra- a random commercial, like. <laughs> Uh, we used to make these radio because we had like these. Uh, oh yeah, we, we had, had the camera because we had we had the uh, we they used to uh, film fights like random ass. Yeah, fights. we had a, so we had we a used camera. Used a dude yeah. at our school had a camera that was good at video. Like a, a school yeah. sanctioned. Uh, no, it wasn't school sanctioned. Oh, no, 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 we used to set up fights. Yeah, we set up at fights school in certain locations. We used to record fights, but we had like God, we had the video footage. Yeah. I remember I had the Snickers commercial. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when they trying to dunk. Yeah, I was just dunking. <laughs> And then, grab a and then I looked at my boy and I was like, man, grab a Snickers. <laughs> so he ate a Snickers and then he tried to dirty it. And then he threw the Snickers in the back of my head. So yeah, he, while he was walking away, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey that was a fun time, though. We were doing some dumb, <laughs> yeah, random yeah, shit, too. Yeah, we had commercials. Shit. I don't even know how we got into that. Like, we had yeah, real we had commercials. commercials. Yeah, we had legit commercials, bro. <laughs> we had legit commercials. Commercials <laughs> to school fights. That's crazy. We had legit commercials, bro. Oh, <laughs> Welcome to First and Fifteen, the only podcast that's trying to get you paid. I'm here with two-time FFPC champion AB. Alongside him is my guy Dio the Machine. Guys, let's do a recap of this last season. Abby, let's talk about how you did this season. Now you did multiple leagues, right? So you did FFPC, but you also did the good guys at Fan Up. Oh, yes, Tell us sir. a little bit about Fan Up, man. Fan Up. Uh, so. It's a newer uh, company mm-hmm. uh, when it comes to fantasy, but they do a lot more than that. So it's a very, very like user friendly app, like a lot going on. Uh, something that I'm like really, you know, starting to explore a little bit more. But obviously, me being a high stakes player, mm-hmm. uh, I jumped into one of the contests called the Flexball Tournament. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, it's a very unique contest, and one thing that I love about it is that. It is, there's nothing like it. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I think we're getting to the age where everybody just has so much information on every type of NFL fantasy football contest, whether it's Dynasty, Superflex, Best Ball, there's, you know, you know, analytical data, there's, I mean, thousands of research articles and analysts that you can listen to or read, Mm -hmm. et cetera. So it's, you know, it's it's becoming so much harder to really try and, you know, stay ahead of the curve in that. So anytime a new contest comes up that sort of kind of levels the playing field Mm -hmm. where there's not analytical data that you can look, you know, look past, you know, look back at, you know, I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because now I can sort of kind of, you know, try and create my own strategy. Mm -hmm. And so to kind of talk about the contest, if you're someone who loves season long, but man, the waivers get to you. Yeah. You know, trying to make sure, you know, you're staying, you know, you know, setting lineups in case a guy gets injured mm-hmm. or, you know, having to deal with trades and things of that nature. The fan, the, the flexball contest is, is something that really allows you to be able to incorporate season long, mm-hmm. but not have to deal with some of the hassle of season long. Okay? Yeah, like, here's the thing with me, like, both you and Dio are like, I consider y'all like pro- Fantasy football players, you know, yeah. like y'all are on it, man. He but the is. Thing I'm about just me, a guy playing fantasy. I'm the novice of the group. Yeah, fan up is cool because no salary caps, yep. no waivers. Yep. It's like it's super easy. It's like a weekly DFS with yeah. no. It's salary a weekly cap. Yeah. DFS yeah. with no salary yeah. cap. So that's season, thing that's a season cool. long weekly. Yeah, yeah. DFS so, with no salary cap. Yeah. So for this specific contest, the flex ball contest, you basically start two running backs, two wide receivers, a quarterback a tight end, and then a flex position that can be either a tight end, a running back, or a wide receiver. Yeah. And you set this lineup every week. And that's it. Mm-hmm. It's set it and forget one, it. One caveat. That flex, that flex is yeah. 1.5. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 1.5x. That's pretty, and, pretty and there's big. no salary cap. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to you know, lock in Kelsey every single week for 18 weeks, you can do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you want to lock in Tyreek Hill 
for 18 weeks, you can do you that. Know, you know what's crazy? Because <clears throat> we're going to talk about the playoff challenge at yeah. some point, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the playoff challenge, obviously, we're going to get to. Everybody that's listening is probably already knows anyway. But <clears throat> with the playoff challenge in the Super Bowl, the players you have, they score like, what, one and a half or yeah. two points? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that and then also DraftKings having their showdowns where yeah. your captain score. It's like all these formats are taking these, these – um, these uh, this thing where you know you have this one player mm -hmm. that you pick that you feel like is gonna score so well mm -hmm. that yeah. you want to get like it's like it's just a different type of strategy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. I like that it's coming into the fantasy yeah. world a little bit more because it mm -hmm. makes you think. Yeah, about things a little different. A little more it. different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The flex yeah. spot is so key, but you know when when you when you initially hear the rules and the and the whole premise of the idea, you think, oh man, that's easy. I can choose. I, I have no restrictions. Mm -hmm. I have no salary cap. Oh. Yeah. I'll just lock in XYZ player mm -hmm. every single week. Yeah. And it's not that easy, yeah. you know? So, you know, one thing I kind of learned throughout the years, like, you got to learn when to jump on the train and stay on the train, and you got to learn when to jump off the train, mm. you know? Because yeah. you'll see, you know, this year, I think more so than any others, there were very few players that provided week in and week out, consist, you know, high, yeah. you know, consistent uh, points. Uh, and we saw a lot of players sort of kind of have these ebb and flows, these peaks and valleys, and mm -hmm. trying to catch the peaks is, is really, you know, where you are. And so every week you set these lineups, mm -hmm. points accrue over a 17-week span, and then whoever is at the top of the board mm -hmm. at the end of the 17 weeks takes home a championship, and it's a nice chunk. First mm -hmm. place gets 500000 Oh, that's Second place – your boy, your, your boy, your boy, second place, <laughs> picks up the 250. Yeah. So, yeah, I was fortunate enough to, uh, you know, to really stick with it. I actually did it with a good friend of mine. Shout out to Carl Rees, yeah. uh, C-Money, uh, who helped me out throughout the process. You know, we really wanted to approach it from a standpoint. Uh, you know, we had a number of different teams and wanted to try to, you know, bring in spreadsheets to make sure mm -hmm. not all teams were alike. Mm-hmm. And then hopefully we could have one team that would just sort of kind of, you know, push itself ahead of the pack. And, and I mean, if you're really looking at trying to get into one of these season long, mm -hmm. you know, national contests with these, you know, large, you know, uh, six figure winnings mm -hmm. uh, and six figure prizes and potentially seven figures next year. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Man, really look at flex ball. Really yeah. look at really look at the fan up because. You can, you know, definitely I'll be, you know, in FFPC, you know, I'll, you know, dabble a little bit uh, in underdog, but this is where, where the, the playing field is just level. Yeah. You know, playing field is level. Yeah. So, you know, that's, that's all I'll say about that, though. Also, I'll say this, too. This is also a heads up that I will be putting a poll out of whether Abby should share some of the fan up winnings <laughs> with both Dio and myself and five mates. I'll be voting on that. It's, uh, I'll be so voting please on that. vote. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is your constitutional uh, duty to vote. Dio, duty. you actually tweeted number two going into the last week. Yeah. FFPC, second ranked team. How did that team? Wait, fit? number two overall. Number two overall. Yeah. Trying to trying to bring home a third trophy, a third yeah, trophy to yeah. sit right there, a third trophy on the yeah. table. It didn't happen. It ended up coming in fifth though. That's yeah. right. it's okay. It's okay. okay. It came in fifth. Try again next year. Yeah, we'll be back. Yeah, try yeah. again next year. We'll be yeah, back. we'll be back. But I was really rooting for you too. I know. I know. You know. <laughs> nah, it's okay. Call no <laughs> now, I, want, I, want, I want to come in first, but that first place team, he did really well this year. Um, yeah. I forget, Legends never die. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He did. He did really good this year. So congrats yeah. to him. Yeah. yeah. But um. I don't know if y'all want to talk about our actual pod teams. Have we talked about those yet? If we can talk about that, but, like, is Justin Jefferson dead to you now? Or are you... Uh, <laughs> no, because you got to come through for the playoff yeah, challenge. Yeah, like, fair hey, enough. Fair I enough. need you, Jay. Yeah. Jay, Jay. <laughs> Jay Jettis. Fair enough. A lot of people have been DMing us about our actual pod team. If you guys want to go back and look at uh, one of the episodes that, that we did before the season, we actually drafted a team on the podcast. It's called our first and 15 team. Our team actually won our league. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, um, and I would encourage y'all to go back and like watch that pod because I actually went back and I don't watch any of our pods. <laughs> None of them. All the hard work that goes yeah. into it. He said, did you, did you see, did you pick up on, I was like, bro, I didn't watch that. I didn't, I didn't listen to that. But no, I actually went back and watched that. And that was just like, it was like an interesting exercise to go back and listen to the three of us, you know, discuss players during a draft, mm -hmm. why we wanted a certain player, you know, who we were close to taking. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we ended up picking up uh, Jacobs in like the eighth round. Yeah, and, yeah, and even yeah. in the eighth round, it was still <laughs> it was like, like pulling yeah, teeth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
we were like <laughs> all the tight ends that we talked about as far as like you know let's wait on tight end let's you know let's mm-hmm. try and pick up some sleeper picks i mean we really hit as yeah. far as the sleepers you know the ones that really mattered the Najokus, the Ingrams. Ingram. Mm-hmm. Was I think good. we even had. Who? Ooh, did we have Higby yeah, as well? Higby, yeah. mm-hmm. You know, again, ebb and flow season. So there were points of the season where these guys weren't doing anything, and then points where you know we were able to okay, ride them cool. out. So yeah. Jalen Hurts yeah. too, because we almost yeah. went Kyler there, yeah. and then we end up going Jalen Hurts. Yeah, yeah. Dial like let's talk about the process a little bit. How will you change your process going into next season? Have you thought about that yet? Or I haven't I really. Haven't. I don't think I'm going to change the process too much. Yeah. You know? yeah. <clears throat> One thing about this season, I think it's – and we could probably say this about every season after the fact, but this season to some extent felt like almost like an outlier. With yeah. How things yeah. were kind of recurring. Mm-hmm. Uh, not only with injuries, but just having these players – and I think you spoke on it before – having these players that had these highs and lows this mm-hmm. season yeah. <clears throat> that you would typically expect some form of consistency. Uh, I just think it was weird. Um, but that's that's football. I, I am truly a believer of literally anything can happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm always, you know, just kind of, you know, being real skeptical about when people just kind of have these certainties in their mind. I'm always like, you know, you never know. I mean, great players can have dead games. You yeah. know, yeah. Jerry Rice had games probably where he had one or two catches. I can't, I'm not, don't, don't, you know, quote me on that. But, you know, <laughs> there might have been a game where he had like one or two catches, but he, yeah. still, he had other games mm-hmm. where he had like 10, 15 catches, you know, so. Yeah. You know, they always even themselves out. But, you know, that game where he has that bad game could be the game where you need him. Yeah. Like. Uh, like Justin Jefferson when I needed him yeah. week mm-hmm. 17 and he gave me yeah, the lowest point total he ever gave you know it happened but yeah. at the same time I bet next year Justin Jefferson is still yeah. going to be a top three yeah. for a pick oh, yeah, like it, it is what it is like knowing absolutely. that he has that in him I'm still yeah. going to try to get him so um, it was crazy so I don't think I'm going to change my process too much I think and I think we mentioned it last episode um, this season made me kind of look closer at my teens and try to you know, build my team better, not, mm-hmm. not just in the draft, but during the season. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, just trying to keep massage your team because knowing that, you know, I used to always be a big advocate of trying to make an anti fragile team, mm-hmm. yeah. a team where no matter what happens, I'm still, I'm still in the running. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think I had to figure out how to remain anti fragile yeah. during the season because. You know, before I could draft a team and it, I can make it work the whole season. Now yeah. it's like every week I got to make this adjustment. Yeah. You have a player that gets hurt, gone for a few weeks. Yeah. Eventually comes back. Now he's a good pickup. You know, all these crazy things that happen. So, yeah. But no, I don't think I'm going to change my process too much. Yeah. But but at the same time, I say that, mm-hmm. honestly, this fantasy football thing, you know, it evolves. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you always got to – you almost have to be like water. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Go with the flow. See how the, the environment, the atmosphere of yeah. the league is changing. Mm-hmm. Um, player values are changing. Now that y'all are playing Dynasty, y'all are going to start getting more into the age of yeah. players and how you how that, that kind of um, changes the way you, you expect the player's production to be going yeah. forward. You know, so yeah. – but no, I don't think I'm going to change it too much. Yeah. I, I think I'm the exact opposite. Yeah. I'm, I'm 100% overreacting to everything I saw <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in 2022. Uh, I'm already taking notes. Like, I'm already ready. I'm already yeah. in the lab. Like, I'm already, like, like prepping. Uh, oh, yeah, I got, like, a detailed notepad going right now. You don't mm. need to get all uh, of them. Just give say some what? examples. Nobody's going to listen to this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, give us all of them, then. Uh, give us all give us some, yeah. man. Like, so, give us some uh, the quarterback position. I mean, just looking at the state of quarterbacks in the league right now uh, and really just looking at the state of certain teams in the league right now. Mm-hmm. We're seeing, you know, we're going to see a lot of changes uh, with teams that historically were able to provide us uh, a number of different fantasy options. Mm-hmm. You know, really, you know, I think there's going to be the haves and the have-nots. And I think, you know, before when things, you know, were kind of close and maybe bunched up and, you know, it was more of a bell curve, I think we're going to have some real – you know, a lot of teams on the uh, outlier ends as mm-hmm. far as, like, either being really, really good or just really, really poor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, for me, like, the QB position is one that, one, I'm not – and I've always been one, like, in the past, uh, before it was not to cool. Wait. yeah. To not necessarily just to not wait, but also to draft, like, multiple quarterbacks, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and now I think that is going to become a new fad, a new thing. Mm-hmm. So, Assessing the quarterback position now, whether or not I'm gonna be drafting quarterbacks high mm-hmm. uh, or not, you know, we'll we'll, come, we'll see. I, I think a lot of that's just gonna depend on like where they fall on the ADP board. But I like the idea because I do I do feel like we are headed towards like teams having just so many different options when it comes to uh, providing fantasy points. Uh, you know, being red zone targets. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, having specialty roles and specialty packages where. 
we may see some of these ebb and flows, uh, you know, kind of moving forward. Maybe not as much as this past year, but I think it'll be just enough. Yeah. So if I can get one position where I just know for sure they're providing me week in and week out, mm -hmm. and I don't have to necessarily guess. Mm -hmm. Because we can go through some of the, you know, low-end quarterbacks that ended up doing well. But they were – I mean, it was a large portion of the so season wait, where they were just terrible. So, what? So I don't – wait. So, what do you change as far as your process? Are you not saying you're going to draft quarterbacks higher? Higher. Like, I, say, I, I, I shouldn't say I'm going to draft them higher. That, that may <laughs> likely be the case. But it's going to be dependent on where they are, where they fall as far as ADP. What I'm saying is that rather than, like, valuing some of the flex positions the way that I valued in terms of, okay, let me fill out my flex roster with my running back and wide receiver, I'm no longer thinking like that. You know, you need to be an elite – you know, flex option for me. And this is, and I'm also just viewing position, all positions as flexes now. I, I, I'm, I don't care if you're a running back, wide receiver. I'm viewing all positions as flexes. I think the league, you know, with the RBBC, you can get RBs late in drafts. Like, everything is a flex right now. So the first two rounds, hmm. I'm sure, are going to be just, you know, guys, studs that, you know, will have somewhat high consistency. Because it's not just about being consistent. I need to feel confident that I can leave you in my starting lineup and then if you put a dud in, I have no qualms or issues about keeping you in said starting lineup. You know, I want to feel comfortable. So I think there's only going to be a handful of guys maybe in the first two rounds. And then after that, it's going to come down to, okay, do I feel confident in this guy? And if not, let me pivot the quarterback, you know. And so, then I need to know. And also, I'm going to have – I have a tier right now as far as quarterbacks that, you know, this is bottom basement and I don't want to go, go past this bottom level. Got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. So no more late round quarterback for you, basically. I'll still draft them. Because I will still have two quarterbacks on my roster. But no no more starting quarterback or first quarterback one on my team being a late round quarterback. I need to have like a strong beat. I mean, it needs to be something like where I feel like very like strong about this guy, you know, busting out like a Lamar situation from a couple of years ago. Okay. Uh, Kyler, Deshaun Watson, those years. Those years I feel very strong. Hmm. Okay. Uh, if I don't feel very strong, no, I'm definitely like, I'm not waiting. It's just, it's not worth it. Gotcha. It's not worth it. You can, the, it's, the league is so deep right now. And I think we're going to see this next year when we start drafting players. I think it's going to be so deep that we're in eighth, ninth, tenth round. You're going to be able to pick up starters. You know Starting what, I mean? quarterbacks? Flex options. Flex. Where so, you're going to like so look at guys you, you think, taking the fifth round and guys you're taking the tenth round. Do you think quarterback value as a whole is going to be higher next year? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Well, I mean, if that's the case, then I don't think it's really a process change. I think it's, it's kind of just what it is what it is, you know? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like everybody's now drafting quarterbacks yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. higher. So it's almost like you have to kind of stay with the pack a little bit. Or miss out on all the good options. Yeah. How many? Maybe we shouldn't waste time doing this practice. But I was gonna say, how many quarterback do you actually see being valued high next year? Five. As far as five. Yeah, we won't get into it. That's a, that's, a, that's a whole other discussion. So you you think it's just five? Because I think it's like eight or nine. I think it's just five. As far as like being valued high. I know that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like eight or nine is what I see. Well, this is when you kind of bring into the uh, psyche of the drafter. You know, if you're someone who doesn't want to take a quarterback high, you're not gonna, you know. You see somebody take a Josh oh, yeah, Allen you're, round okay, two. I, I you're gonna, you're saying. gonna, you're gonna wait. You're gonna wait. Yeah. You're gonna wait. So it's you know? just gonna natural, just just draft yeah. um, strategy in itself. Once you see quarterbacks take high, and you realize other teams don't worry. Now let me ask you this: Do you think it's possible? Because I think it's possible that teams are gonna probably consider drafting two. I don't want to say high end, but you know, solid quarterbacks. You know, next year, like actually two startable quarterbacks, and not just a a backup if need be quarterback? I definitely think uh, players and drafters are going to be looking at drafting two quarterbacks like within the first like eight, nine rounds. Okay. I can see that. But I don't think anybody's going to be spending two like, you know. Uh, like getting like a five, Patrick five, Mahomes. Yeah. Still yeah. Like top, first five rounds. Two yeah. top, top ten rounds is pretty That's high, pretty significant. Yeah, That's yeah. pretty significant. Yeah. But, I mean, I was kind of doing some of that last year as far as like, you know, if I missed out on the Lamars and the Kylers and the Hurts. Uh, but that was more like two. a double tap. That yeah, was more that like was a, a nine tap. and ten. Exactly, exactly. I'm asking, do you think people are going to do like a three and nine? I can't see mm. that. You can't see that? I can't see that. Because I think, I think you know, the way people view Josh Allen and Mahomes right now is almost like is they're indestructible. They're indestructible, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Or they can't get hurt, you know, because we haven't seen them get hurt. Like, like you're never going to not exactly. play them. But mm -hmm. if you draft Lamar or Kyler, then you're gonna draft the backup because you've seen them get right. hurt. I, th I think the 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 um, the reason why people will consider it is because number one, as we've seen this season, these quarterbacks are getting hurt, mm -hmm. especially yeah. the ones that we value with their running. Yeah, they're getting hurt. You know, so number one, you you really have that second option that's still elite enough to where you feel good as far yeah. as what they're gonna be able to produce for you. And then number two, 
it might be a defensive strategy to some people. Where they're like, yeah. if yeah. I'm gonna take this quarterback so these other teams that's tough. can't and have that's, this quarterback. And that's tough. So you gotta if you do that, you need to feel comfortable that whatever they're having to pick from is suboptimal and it's not gonna hurt you. Because I mean, if they're able to find a late round quarterback, that's worth not it. only did you lose out on like your sixth, seventh round draft pick or wherever you like reach for them, right. now they won mm. by getting a but, sixth, seventh round but flex. With what you just said, those late quarterbacks are not people are not gonna have confidence in them though. Ex- exactly. Know? And this so. is the thing too, is like and we always talk about or at least I always talk about this, like it's not about like the week in and week out. You know, it's not about the uh, end of year fantasy numbers where mm-hmm. you look and see, okay, this guy was ranked seventh. You know, when it came to quarterbacks, it's how many times did you confidently put him in your starting yeah. lineup, and how you accurate were that. you? How accurate yeah. accurate were you in starting right, that right, player? Because right, right, right. you can take a player like Justin Fields. Right. You may not have started in week one, but if you did, you definitely didn't start in week two. Right. Then not week three, not week right. four, and then when he finally blew up, he was on your bench. How were you, long were did you, it were take you comfortable? You to, yeah. yeah. Were you comfortable yeah. that next week? Mm-hmm. So how many like quality starts did you actually get out of Justin Fields? Mm-hmm. You know. It, you know, but, but I, I will say this though, and that's probably not the the best example. No, he's not. Once the best you did put him in there, yeah. he went off. He's every not the best week. He has to stay. Yeah. But he has But I understand what you're saying. Good example. Isaiah Hodgins to me. Right, yeah, like, but he came. But even he late. has to stay really late, right? and he's more of a necessity start. Like, yeah. man, I don't got nobody else to like. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, how comfortable <laughs> did you feel? Like, right. and, and, of course, it's always going to take, especially he, for people that come out of nowhere. It's always going to take you at least a week. Just yeah, like, he, I don't. Unless you just, you're just out of options. Yeah, you know, you're yeah, desperate. Yeah. Now, going back to what I was asking you before, I think there's a chance it might be pretty viable. Again, as far as people taking that quarterback top four round and then top yeah. ten, because you just stated the point earlier. People are going to realize they can get flex players in these later rounds yep. compared mm-hmm. to what they used to expect. Yeah. And those flex players can be people that feel comfortable starting. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. It's going to be funny how the, the board goes next year. Yeah. I'm still trying to decide how early I'm going to draft and how heavy I'm going to draft when I do start drafting. Yeah. If I want to, like, wait, because I know there's some drafters that don't draft early at all. They wait yeah. till, like, yeah. late July, early mm-hmm. or. August really training yeah. camp and they mm-hmm. say okay let me now start to draft yeah, yeah. Uh, it's funny you know I was looking back at, at all the teams that I drafted yeah. uh, and for me like just as far as football guys main event uh, I don't know I think uh, about 50% or so like made the playoffs mm-hmm. and then I got real fortunate I had some like I think it was like Cleveland defense that I just like picked up across the board so a good amount of those made the tournament uh, nobody really made noise when it came to football guys uh, main event, I think I had like uh, five of fifteen uh, make the playoffs. No, five of fifteen, no, five of twenty maybe, mm-hmm. something around there. And then I think I want to say like all five of those made the uh, tournament as well. Uh, but no one really, really made noise. I had a lot. I had a number of you know Kylers and just didn't have a, 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 a second quarterback. But like in looking at those teams in terms of like when they dra- when I drafted, mm-hmm. I didn't like. You know, last year I saw like that when I drafted early, whether mm-hmm. it was just rust or whatever, like none of those teams did well. Mm-hmm. This year it was just kind of mixed in. Like, was, a couple yeah, of teams like teams. early on. The same for yeah. me. Yeah, and yeah. I could tell because I also like, you know, we talked about diversifying. Like mm-hmm. that was like one of our first pods. Like I'm, I'm going to try something new this year as far as diversifying. Mm-hmm. And I think I saw that play a role this year because like as soon as I started switching up, okay, now I'm going to start, you know, trying to target this player, target this strategy or go with this type of bill, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, let me so. say this. I think this is a concern I have with me having drafted early. Hmm. I think what I did consciously or unconsciously is I started drafting early. I started seeing these players I liked. Um, well, not really liked. I just started drafting and started seeing value fall. Like, oh, this yeah. guy I can get here. Bam, yeah. bam, bam. But then as I kept drafting throughout the summer se- uh, season – the players I started liking, I started saying, okay, now I want to make sure I get these players. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I started, like, drafting them almost maybe a, a, a round before ADP. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or just making sure I got that. Like, that's my yeah. guy. Yeah. I need to make sure I get that guy. So now it's not so much getting them now at value. It's more of get, making sure I get them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I think that made me lose out on other value that was dropping at that point. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That I should have been grouped just, just for almost yeah. diversity or just yeah. value-based mm-hmm. drafting. So that kind of concerns me a little bit, you know, yeah. because if I know if I draft late when I don't even know what the boards are looking like and I'm just yeah. taking who happens to be available for me in a certain round, mm-hmm. yeah. maybe I won't do that. But at the same time, I also did that order for my teams yeah. 
and I found the teams that I drafted earlier kind of did pretty good. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. the team that ended up in the fifth place, mm-hmm. I think I drafted it in uh, June. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. I, I really want to take some time this season before drafting mm-hmm. to really look back on it and see yeah. – what I can learn from that. So maybe going back to your question from earlier, yeah. maybe I do need to review my process. At the moment, I don't have a yeah. change, but mm-hmm. uh, that's just a little concern I have. I do have another mm-hmm. note too. Okay. I'm not doing any rankings. I'm not doing any. You did rankings last year? Yeah, I had mental rankings. I mean, I actually had rankings. <laughs> yeah, mental rankings. Number 18 is yeah, uh, Amal's yeah, Ross. I actually had I actually, <laughs> your fantasy I football. No, I actually, had, I actually had rankings that I created, but they were all mental. I mean, it wow. was, you, you, I draft so much that I know what guys I have what, you know, ahead of what guys. But I also like, I mean. Hall of Fame hoes. You know, That's no. what I'm saying. <laughs> Did it all without but, a pen. And, and as you guys know, like, I try to, like, listen to as much as I can listen to. I try to take in as much yeah. as I can take in. This year, like I've watched so I've watched more football than I've ever like watched like ever, mm-hmm. and I've gone back to watch certain games. You were watching whole games too, like yeah. whole games. So what I'm gonna try next year is I'm like basically drowning out all noise. Mm-hmm. I'm not, you know, basically it's just gonna be everything that I've seen from this previous year. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna try to you know stay in tuned. And, and, yeah. stay, and stay with the yeah. beat of the off season. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. That in, like, now that he got me in the dynasty. So this yeah. year, like this year, he's coming to my side. I'm coming to die Coming to my it's, side, it's, yes, sir. It's, it's no more finally. It's no more and it's not that like necessarily the outside noise swayed me one way or the other. Or like, I'm a, it's just that like I felt like I just I put in so much work during the season. Like yeah. I don't want it to be tainted whatsoever. Yeah, I feel like I, like I have so much clarity right now, and, mm-hmm. and things can always change. Players get hurt. I'm wrong. But, but you like, did you but, did just say a minute ago that you are you overreacted to everything. Yeah, you did just say that. I said I'm going to overreact. So, so I'm it's good. I going for to you it's like good. Like withdraw. Yeah, 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 for you it's good to like. Yeah. You know, earmuffs. Yeah, yeah earmuffs, a little bit. Earmuffs don't come. At but me but at the same time, I mean, you're, <laughs> you won so much. I mean, your strategy might work. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You but go second, and but up, we all know you can't trophies. do the same thing forever. Yeah, you exactly. Know, it it gets stale at some point. Yeah. But don't think that the things you did to maybe your overreaction got you where I you were successful. I'm an I'm an overreaction. I know. Trust me. Yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> I know this. <laughs> I know. But it's worked. So I'm not gonna say don't do it. And, yeah. and I'm never again. I've always said I'm never gonna tell people what yeah, to do. Absolutely. I'm gonna tell you my thoughts. You yeah. just take it however you want. Yeah, yeah. But but yeah, I, that's. What you're saying is yeah. what I've tried to do yeah. because I feel like there's way too much noise. Yeah. And uh, I think I, I may be an overreactor as well, but I've, I've trained myself not to get the yeah. news to react to it. Mm, so yeah. Yeah. real quick, we glossed over it, and I wanted to mention it because it is a big learning lesson for us mm-hmm. and probably for other people out there. Uh, Our pod right. team. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, this is a monster. Having oh, a – that okay, <laughs> that people, thing was a monster. There was, there, it was like week <laughs> – 11. I got in our, I got in our text thread, right? Yeah. Like, man, and I was this like, team can make hey, <laughs> this team right here? Like, I just looked at all my teams, but I stopped at our team. The pot I was like, wow, yeah. this team looks like it's a monster. Yeah. And I think y'all were like, oh, Mike Williams got hurt, you know, you know, yeah. you know we had a little debate. Yeah. But I was like, I don't care. Like, this team is a monster. Can I run down some of the names on this team? Yeah. Right wait, wait, let me finish. Let me finish. Right, go, go, go. So then... In the playing out that way again, we won the league. Yeah. Team looks great. We yeah. going in confident, like yeah. I don't know oh, about made, my other team. Yeah, yeah, but we, we about to get this money. Right. We, we, about take, like, we about to take this. <laughs> <laughs> we about to yeah. get this money, shoot. Because remember the last pair we even talk about yeah. who do we yeah. were trying to pick up for waivers, and we were like, if we get this waiver guy, we were good. I don't even was it. I don't even remember who it was. Maybe it was Hodgins. I think it, it was Hodgins. A, a conquest. The, the person. It could have been a conquest. Nah, I wouldn't. No, I think it was Hodgins. We ended up getting the Hodgins. I think it was We Hodgins. were stacking running backs. So yeah. wasn't it? Wasn't it was at the very end of the pod. We were excited because yeah. we got him away because we just found out. Oh, no. It was DJ Chark. And we started Oh, Shark. Shark. And he yes. went off. Yes. Yes. Shark. yes. Shark. And he it went off. Yeah. So, anyway, I say all this all happy and confident. But the lesson to be learned here is please, people out there, if there's one thing you can oh. learn from this podcast, to this episode, <laughs> please have more than one quarterback on oh, your man. roster. Oh, man. And let, let me even say it like this. If you're so confident in your quarterback being such a great fantasy player, get his backup. Yeah. yeah. Just just please, because that's the lesson we learned. Oof, we had no backup hard. to Hurts whatsoever. Oh, my God. And when Hurts got phantomly hurt. We were done. 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 We were so done. we had Jalen Hurts. Yeah. We had Eckler. Mm-hmm. 
Josh Jacobs, mm. Pittman, and then we started Ingram at the perfect. Oh yeah, we started right him at the times. perfect time. Well, oh my! But God. that goes back to that it. was time. That goes back to it. Know when to get off the train and mm-hmm. know when to jump on the train. Yeah. yeah, man, that was a great start. Aaron Jones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We had Aaron Jones in our flex. They're like we were just we were like yeah. Yeah. yeah okay all right we throw him in there get in there kid <laughs> yeah 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 go ahead get in there yeah. go ahead get yourself let him hit the ball you know what I'm saying get yourself <laughs> then D Hop came back yeah D Hop came back, back. Oh, that was great that was lovely I mean like we were looking good man I mean Mike Williams just on the bench waiting Mike Williams mm-hmm. on the bench yeah. waiting chilling. Philly and defense. We, we were doing good with our defenses. Yeah. yeah. So it yeah. looked great, but we had Philly defense and San Francisco defense. Yeah. And this is a team we dropped Najoku too. Yeah. Yeah. Did we have Higby. We had Higby. Yeah. We had Higby. Higby. He was going Higby. off. I mean, yeah. man. Oof. I mean, and then we ended up picking. I'm a, up I'm a type of person, and this kind of goes back to me finishing fifth in the in the FFPC con- or football guys contest, mm-hmm. where once it happens and it doesn't work out, I try to just move on. It's hard. So mentally, I moved on. Yeah. yeah. But it is a lesson I've learned, and I'm never going to forget it. Yeah. And I don't care how my team looks. You know, that's never going to happen never. ever, 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 ever again. But it just – it's one of those things where it's like, what could have been? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Because mm-hmm. it could – but yeah. anyways, I digress. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. No, no. I mean, like, I'm done. I'm done with season long. This is it. Oh, yeah. You're going <laughs> to – you're converting – you're converting 100% to DFS? 100% DFS. Yeah. I back. might He'll be I back. might hit, like, some Should we start, Maybe we start doing DFS content. Content. Yeah, yeah. Content. yeah, yeah. You'll I'm be our DFS, DFS expert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm done. Bring like, Dorsey like, on the pod. Right, right. Y'all, y'all, y'all have a segment. Have like the Chris and Dorsey <laughs> DFS discussion. Right, 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 right. Let me ask I you this. This is – Are you really done with everything or done with high stakes? No, no, no. I'm done with just season long. I'm using all my That's what I'm asking. Season long, like – Totally or season long high stakes? Season long high stakes. Okay. I mean, like, I'll still be. So you're allocating my, all your funds to DFS now? Yeah, all of my funds. Are, are you that DFS. good? My returns are a lot better than season long. Okay. I mean, you got you to gotta gravitate okay, to what yeah. you did at, yeah. you know? You got to do what a you got to do, man. A lot better. You got to feed your family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I'm, I'm done. Dorsey, this is like my request. We need to start our own Dorsey show. Dorsey said he's not coming out. Dorsey said he's not coming on the show until he wins the Millie. Oh man. <laughs> like that's his that is his soul, like yeah. his, that's his goal. I'm only like, that's his motivation. Though. You gotta win that Millie and then he's like on the show. All right, all right, cool. Um, cool, cool. are, are we talking win. about playoff challenge now? Let's What's talk about the, the playoff challenge okay. real quick. So okay. let's yeah. talk about strategy because to me Should we talk about the contest in itself, or explain it, because just in case people yeah, explain it, explain don't it. really understand what's For going on. For those that are not playing or have not set up a team on FFPC's Playoff Challenge, it is a unique tournament where you pick one player from each team um, to fill out a 12-man roster. Again, there are 14 playoff teams, but you fill out a 12-man roster with a quarterback, two running backs, two receivers, four flex players – a tight end, kicker, and defense, and that is your... And you have to fade two teams. And you have to fade two teams. There has to be teams. two teams where you have no, no player from. Correct. And that is your roster for the entire playoffs. Mm-hmm. Highest team, uh, highest scoring team wins the tournament. Yeah. Super Bowl players get what, I think... I think it's a point and a half. Yeah, one and a half. The points... Of that game. So if they go off in the Super Bowl, like that could really push your exactly. team's point total really push way your ahead, team. you know. So yeah. yeah. It almost it almost makes it where no matter how the playoffs play out, as long as you got a guy that's going into the Super Bowl, you have a chance. Which right. is very hard not to do. Mm-hmm. It's very oh, yeah. hard to not have the guy that's in the, Super, in the Super Bowl, Bowl on yeah. your team. Right. Yeah. Right. Unless it's the Seahawks and the Ravens that get there. Then yeah, right. then, <laughs> then everybody's screwed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> then everybody's screwed. And you know, so you got to go out of your way to like really like you know just like deep you know di- differentiate yourself from like the rest of the field. Yeah, go way off the cuff with it to like just like have you know the, maybe the Seattle you know Geno Smith as yeah. your quarter. So I don't know. You you you, you want to continue talking about the contest? Is that pretty? Oh, right, right, yeah, right. Yeah. But that's pretty much it. But so FFPC does two. There is a five hundred thousand dollar winner, a hundred thousand dollar winner, but. Essentially, that's the case. Choose a player from each team to build a 12-man roster. Fade two teams. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's an interesting concept because, again, looking at the strategy from last year, you posted in our group thread last year's perfect lineup with the winning lineup. And it's interesting because, obviously, they had Kelsey 
and not Pat Mahomes, but Pat Mahomes was the highest scoring yeah. player. But because Kelsey far and away scores more points than any other tight end, and he scores towards the top like end of receivers, it made more sense to play Kelsey than it did to play. I don't want to say it, it, it made it, more it, sense. It, well, it's the combination of Kelsey and and said quarterback versus Mahomes and said tight end. Right, right. right. No, no, so I it think was like I, I, wasn't Allen in the in – the, he was in the, the winning lineup. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was really like the having two lineup. games of Allen yeah. versus having three games of Mahomes, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So this is, I mean, so yeah. for me, when it comes to strategy, for this particular contest, I don't care about like who is going to win what game, how many games they're going to play. Like, I've just erased, like, I don't care about that. To me, it does not matter. See, I disagree. To right. me, it does not matter whatsoever. Because unless, like I said, unless you were really just going off the off the wall with your predictions and trying to get like the Seattle guys in here, trying mm-hmm. to get the Baltimore guys in here and things like that. For the most part, you are going to be picking a player from almost every single team. Mm-hmm. Now I'll have multiple teams. So games that are maybe questionable, you know, like that Dallas Tampa game, you know, I'll have some, you know, I pretty much have mostly all Dallas, all my uh, teams have Dallas players, I think for the most part, mm-hmm. but then I'll have some teams that have some Tampa Bay just in case they win. Mm-hmm. You think Dallas wins the game? I, don't, I have no clue. Literally no clue. But, but that's part of the process. Though. But this like, is the thing. Is, it, it doesn't matter. Because you're going to not only, not only – because you're going to have – you you have to roster players that are only going to play one game. See, but here's you why have it to matters roster those to players. me. It's because I need my defense to lose round one. And I need my kicker to lose That's the round strategy. One. So the, the strategy uh, – for yeah, people that I'm, are not familiar with the yeah. contest – people that are not familiar with the contest, ideally – the the two teams you fade, mm-hmm. as well as um, the kicker and the defense, and then two flexes are the teams you plan to lose. Mm-hmm. So I say that to say if you think the if you think there's six teams that are going to lose, you shouldn't play players from all six of those teams. Mm-hmm. You know you want to basically make it where the teams that you feel are going to lose are not players that you have valued on your team. Mm-hmm. And they always say <clears throat> the kicker and defense should be one of those players. Mm-hmm. So what you're saying is you want to make sure you choose the team that you feel like is going to lose mm-hmm. and put them in those slots. While Abby, you're saying it doesn't even matter. No, because it's already built in. Okay. No, you know, I'm not I'm not building lineups where I'm like, okay, you know, I'm going to really try and get, you know, different here. I'm going to really try and, like, you know, go for these, like, you know, 1% ownership players mm-hmm. in these 1% spots. I'm not doing that. I'm living within, you know, the bell curve, mm-hmm. not on the outliers. So that's already built in. Mm-hmm. So for me, the But rest living of it in the bell matter. curve, is that going to win you the tournament, though? Say what? Living in the bell curve, would that All win you the tournament? All you need is a couple of little diff- you know, a couple of players that are going to be low owned that'll be fine. Got you. So it, to me, like I said, that's why it doesn't matter, like, okay, who plays two or three games versus who plays three or four games. It doesn't matter. I, I generally agree with you with the exception of that kicker and defense. It's really important for them not to play two games. If we're if you're making the argument that you I get need that. like like the top players at every single position, well then you're gonna end up having a defense but you're gonna end up playing either the 49ers defense or the Eagles. No, defense. no, no, no. So so like exactly so I mean, that's a good point, but I'm not putting 49 I'm not playing the 49ers defense, you right. know. So when I look at like okay, who could potentially score the most points and, and like who can like have a blow up week, who can potentially mm-hmm. give me that 40-point week, you know, you you're not fading 49ers skill players to mm-hmm. do that. I'm also not playing Brock Purdy, you know. Right. So to me, some of like I'm, you know, I'm approaching it from like a, you know, um, a logical standpoint, I guess, you know. Uh, you know, uh, a more consensus standpoint of what we think is going to happen. Mm-hmm. But I'm not taking into account, you know, whether or not San Francisco is playing three or four games or uh, Philly's definitely playing gonna. three games. That doesn't matter because you're going to play a San Francisco skill player and you're going to play a Philadelphia skill player. So, and we know it doesn't matter if you play Jalen Hurts. It doesn't matter. So, like, here's Based my on historical process, data so anyway. The only reason why the playoff ch- challenge broke down the way that it did last year is because Kelsey was so much of an outlier. If that was not the case, then Pat Mahomes was so far ahead of Josh Allen playing another game that he should have been in an optimal like lineup, but because Kelsey was more ahead of the next best tight end, the next best receiver, that it made it 
so that Pat Mahomes couldn't be the starter. So with me, I'm looking at what wild card quarterback I believe can make the Super Bowl because I don't believe that Kelsey is going to be that much ahead of the field. I mean, I now, don't know. I no, don't know. I, I don't could know. be wrong about that. If I'm wrong about that, well, then I'm screwed, right? That's but I don't think that Kelsey is going to be that much ahead of the field. And with that being said, then uh, I need a quarterback that's going to play all four games because a quarterback that plays all four you games. Want, you want a wild card quarterback. I want a wild so card So you're basically saying I don't want Hurts nor Mahomes. Right. I don't want Hurts or Mahomes. Well, I do want at least one share of Hurts or Mahomes. But my other teams, no. I want a quarterback that is going to play four games because I don't think that Kelsey will go off. Right. Let me ask you. This. Let me ask y'all a question. I asked Dorsey this question on Monday. I'm gonna ask y'all who do y'all think is going to win the Jaguars Chargers game? I'm taking Jags. Who you Chargers. Taking? Chargers. I'm taking Chargers too. Oh, uh, by the way, that's why I was trying to correct your bracket. That's the first thing I looked at. <laughs> your bracket, um, anyway, your by the way, I yeah, submitted it was a play on bracket. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I'm going to post it like right in this spot that's fine. on the pod so that's that fine. people They'll can correct see what you my too. Yeah. Anyway, but the reason I asked that because if the Chargers win like I expect, mm -hmm. then the next round they're facing the, the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. Derwin James literally studies how to stop Travis Kelsey every day of his life because mm -hmm. he just he's just infatu infatuated just stopping him. Mm -hmm. And he so, went off on him. Mm -hmm. Last time they played, three touchdowns. Mm -hmm. So, if Derwin James succeeds, and we're talking about like a Pro Bowl, you know, all pro player, mm -hmm. um, and, and kind of contains Kelsey a little bit, mm -hmm. um, and I'm not even going to sit here and say there's not a chance Chargers can win that game because obviously there's a chance because they've they taken them to the brink yeah. this yeah, season. Absolutely. So, the Chargers can win. Um, mm -hmm. And they're healthy. And healthy if the Chargers do win that game, that's actually a great – you know, thought mm -hmm. process to not have Kelsey on your team because I think Kelsey might be the highest, if not one of the highest, has to be. You know, own mm -hmm. players. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I guess what I'm saying is, when you think it through, it's not crazy to think fading Kelsey is a is a is a is, a, um, is not a viable strategy. I 100% you know agree. You know what I'm saying? So agree. so I feel you on that. Mm -hmm. Also, with the fact that because the ownership is just going to be so high, you have such great leverage. That you know. Because I, I, I will say this, though. If you're not going to play Kelsey, I almost feel like you have to play Mahomes. Mm -hmm. but this is, and, this is, and this is my point. This mm -hmm. is kind of getting – this is part of the, the games don't matter, a different segment of it, but it's part of that strategy is that you don't have to pick the player that scores the most points on that team to win this tournament. Of course. Mm -hmm. So just because Mahomes and then Kelsey number two, that doesn't mean that you can't pick – any any other player? Oh on yeah, that of team course, of course, and still win because yeah. that another player on that team, like you said, if Kelsey yeah, gets taken given out, Sunday, you we could see you know Andrews mm -hmm. go off week one, Chargers beat uh, the Chiefs, mm -hmm. and McKinnon have like mm -hmm. eight for ninety and a touchdown. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. and then even though Mahomes scored the most point, you only got one game out of him. Mm -hmm. Kelsey was taken out, McKinnon scored, or you could see you know, or it was Pacheco. Pacheco or McCole Hardman coming back, yeah. you know, or I mean, Juju has a game. Yeah, but Cole should Probably be not back against the Chargers. The, the reason why I think that's a good angle to look at it with this playoff challenge is because I think so much of the field is going to just assume the Chiefs are not only just going to win that game, but damn near might go to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I think there's a real non-zero chance yeah. that the Chiefs can end up playing one game, mm -hmm. and that's how I get different. Yeah. Exactly. That's how I get different. And, and you can you can actually have that narration in your mind like it plays yeah. out and it's not crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. You got to remember the Chiefs and the Chargers are also division rivals. That's going to yeah. be the third time they play each other. Yeah. You know, the, and it's the hard Char to beat a team three times. Right. We the Chargers about. coming off a wild card win if they win against the Jags and the yeah. Chiefs resting. It's just not crazy. Now, with that being said, if I was a betting man, obviously mm -hmm. I'd put my money on the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're Shoot. talking playoff challenge and being unique. You should put your money on the Jags, by the way. That Jags defense. I, I don't trust the Chargers defense, actually. I got you. And so that's why I'm picking Jags there. They're going to be home. Did you watch the game on Sunday? On the Jags, Saturday? They, played, mm -hmm. they played the Titans, you realize. That. Yeah, did you watch that yeah. game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched you, it. You still feel good about them? I still feel good about them. Again, they felt like they must win. 
Yes, only because I think that Titans defense is leaps and bounds better. The Titans than, defense is good at stopping the run, but their pass, yeah. their pass, pass defense, defense is horrendous. The corners are terrible. Uh, yeah, but so the, court, the corners passing. literally tackle people. Yeah. They just they're, they're horrendous. <laughs> but <laughs> so is the Chargers <laughs> pass defense. The Chargers pass no, defense is no, terrible. No, no, the Chargers, Chargers, Chargers run defense is a little suspect. Chargers run defense is suspect. Nah, Chargers but but defense. guess what? They just got Bosa back. Yeah, fair enough. They just got Bosa. Fair enough. That's a game wrecker. <laughs> That's yeah. a game wrecker. Now again. I'm not again. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I just see the Chargers winning the game. Mm-hmm. You yeah. got to remember the Jaguars. Yeah, everybody you know excited about them, but they start off so bad, and they're still the Jags. Historically, they've been poor. Mm-hmm. People probably say well, the Chargers. You know, they probably don't have any history. Neither do the Jaguars. Y'all can mm-hmm. have them. That's Very true. young team. Mm-hmm. You know, and their defense has been up and down. Yeah, they you have. know what I'm saying. Yeah. So, but a lot better than the Chargers' defense, and they also playing. Yeah, home. it might end up being a shootout. It's also going to be a cross-country trip for the Chargers, too. And that matters in football. But it's the playoffs. Hey, going back to the Kelsey, mm-hmm. going back matters. to the uh, fading Kelsey uh, and Mahomes, at the, you know, assuming that the, uh, the Chiefs lose, Mahomes is not going out without a fight. Mm-hmm. So oh, yeah. If, he, if they lose, you can guarantee that he's throwing for he's over throwing, 300 yeah. yards mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, and two throwing, TDs. He's throwing. That's why I said Mahomes is a, yeah. is a good so, option. So, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, if they, only, if they lose that one game. Yeah. He's still a good option. Oh, that's what I'm saying. So no, if they lose that no, game, so that no. means you're fading Mahomes and Kels. So mm-hmm. then, who do you pick? Knowing that Mahomes is throwing for 300, if they lose, and probably two TDs. See, here's the thing. That's the that's that's no. that's the tough one. Right you there. can't have a quarterback that only plays that's one a good game. question. Yeah, you that's can't, a good question. Because one. when you, when you say it like that, you almost have to go back to say, okay, well, I just got to eat Kels. Right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> like I just got to, I just got to eat it because, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It, because so much of the field is gonna have just him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And everybody's gonna have a chief. Yeah. And the chief that is gonna be successful is most likely gonna be him. Yeah. That's that's like I can't tr- yeah. trust him, Juju. Yeah. To get back to your early comment or your question about the Cowboys, you mm-hmm. know, who do I think is gonna win? And I was just, you know, basically saying I'm just basically playing Cowboys and all. That's mm-hmm. how I'm approaching CD. Mm-hmm. I feel like CD is going to be very, very high owned. Okay, yeah, he's the guy. Yeah, because everybody, you know, we've seen him kind of blow up over the last, you know, few weeks. Pollard's been kind of injured. They play in Tampa Bay. He's supposed to have a you know legit run defense. Mm-hmm. He's also got to share with Zeke. Uh, so I feel like CD is going to be so high owned. Okay, because they not they could lose. They could make it to the championship game. Hell, mm-hmm. you got him in the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Chris so, has the Cowboys in Super Bowl. Yeah, so I feel like. CD will be so high on, like, I'm just going to eat that chalk. <laughs> I'm glad y'all threw me out there. Like, yeah. 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 Let the record reflect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I think I agree with you on CD. I think Pollard is obviously an option. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think many people are going to trust Dak. I don't think many people are going to trust Zeke. I got a Dak lineup. You should have oh, a Dak sure. lineup. I, I got a Dak let lineup. me say this. I got a Dak lineup. And I don't ask you how many lineups you have. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. But if you only had like one or two, yeah. would you have a deck lineup? You know I got more than two lineups. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. I know you do. But if you had one or two. Oh, no, I'm not playing that. You're not playing that. Yeah. If, so, I, if I had only yeah. two lineups, I'd probably play. You don't got to say. I don't want you, unless you want to give out your, your plays. Nobody, nobody, nobody listening. Ain't okay. Nobody, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know they are listening. They're like, We're just talking to a, We're just talking <laughs> to the wind. Just. You know how many DMs I get? Like, I'm like, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you something. And I'm like, all right. All no, right. but like, I'll be honest but, about it. Like. I only have three of the big tournament, and I just chose one quarterback from each of the AFC teams that I think will make it, and I just kind of built it off that. Just because I think that it's, <laughs> I think that it has to either. be. But you just said you want a quarterback. You have to have a quarterback that you think is going to play four games. Right, but then I also have Mahomes. just in case. Mahomes. Yeah, like I have my okay. homes. Okay. Like you can't team. play this contest as just in case. Yeah, you do. I mean, like that's what I mean. Like, <laughs> so let me let me guess. And then everybody else. Is so I mean, I can basically guess your quarterbacks are then Burrow, Allen, and mm-hmm. Holmes. Yeah. Okay. Um, if so, I had two, for me, it would just be Hurts and Allen. Right. But okay. But what I'm saying is, going back to the Cowboys, mm-hmm. most people, if they have like less than like three or four, most likely are not going to play Dak. Mm-hmm. Most likely are not going to play Zeke. Well, it depends if they if they if they're kind of going with the logic like it matters how many games my quarterback plays. Mm-hmm. And if they're I Cowboys think, fans, basically, I, yeah. 
<laughs> they think, think the Cowboys they, are taking it all the way. And I think the Cowboys can play like multiple games, and yeah. like they're gonna play Dak. Yeah, okay, I am not okay, a Cowboys okay, okay, okay. Fan for the Even if you do think the Cowboys are gonna take it all the way, would you play Dak? As, as would Dak be your quarterback? The same if Dak I that thought, leads the league, or not leads the league? But if I thought if I thought the Cowboys were going I'm to the Super Bowl, it would be over Dak. CD. Yes, it yeah. would be Dak because. Game to game, yes, CD may have like one or two blow up games, but there's some games where he may just put up a five to six. So, so you, so you feel that strongly about Dak being able to give you a four game stretch of having a good fantasy output. To he has he a can... lot of he has a lot of options. He has a lot of options, and I okay. think I do think you know I think you'll see enough of T Y Hilton to where it will matter. You'll see enough of Pollard in the passing game to where it will matter. Okay. You'll see enough of Schultz. I don't okay. know if I'm there with Dak. So. Yeah, I think if I think if the Cowboys are successful, even if they go to the Super Bowl, I still think CD is the play, yeah. or even Pollard, I think or Pollard even Schultz. I think yeah. Schultz, especially if you just want to get that tight end premium. Because again, I don't think we mentioned it, but they still have the tight end premium in this format. Yeah, yeah. You know, so so that's still part of your strategy. Um, and then think about tight end premium on top of that Super Bowl premium. Mm, yeah. Now it's like you're in three X, right? Is yeah. that how it works? The math works. I don't know. I didn't pass. No. Yeah. no it's not <laughs> <laughs> well, it's something they start off with one X and then they get. One X again in the Super Bowl. Sure. No, it's not. I don't know how. Well, somebody got somebody do the math in. I think it is three X. Let it. Let it. It's not three X. It's probably more like two and a half or two point two. One and a half X times one and a half X is not three X. Two point two. Let's move on. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, the point I'm making is I think I I don't see Dak as being played a lot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, again, I, I think there's certain teams that they just have. A player that is most likely going to be just rostered across the board yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. on damn near every team, just because that it's almost like no matter the way it plays out, whether they lose game, the one game or they go to the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. this is the guy that's going to be the guy that scores. Their See, point. I don't think that I, I really don't like. I think there's only to me in my mind there's only really one team where that should be the case. Who? That is the bit, D- Stephon Diggs. If you don't play Josh Allen, mm-hmm. I was gonna say okay, yeah, I agree. okay, okay. Yeah. Otherwise, like yeah, yeah. I think with the Chargers, I think you can see games where what about like, Keenan Allen? What about he's really come up late? I think mm-hmm. you can see him outscore. Edler. But what about what about the Giants? Who are you playing on the Giants? I'm really trying to fade the Giants. I do have a but, couple but, of single but Barkley if you're teams. Playing the Giants, Barkley, Barkley. Th- yeah. That's the type of player I'm talking about. Where it's like if people are playing a Giant player, it's most likely gonna be Barkley across the board, even though. Mm. But you're going to get hurt the there Steve, because a lot of people may not be playing but they're right. a Giants player. But the Vikings you think he might be fading the Giants? So, like I totally think, fading them? I think, I think it'll be close enough to where like you could get hurt by playing Barkley in all your lineups. Yeah, but you think people are like totally fading? Like they're not even putting him like on defense or kicker. Um, I don't think yeah. it's gonna be a hundred percent fade across the board. Like so, maybe so, a, maybe a, a Giants flex player will be rostered in I don't know fifty. But the flex, okay, who would that flex player? It'll likely be Barkley. It's Barkley, like, like yeah, right? It's yeah, Barkley. Almost ninety percent is probably yeah. gonna be Barkley. But that's the same thing. That's what that's yeah. what I'm saying with uh with uh the Bills, with Diggs and yeah. Allen. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, every, I feel other, like that's my players. differentiating team. Though. Yeah, but like, every other team, team, team you can get, like, even San Francisco. Like, yeah, there's, there's, there's I think there's team, like three teams that I'm speaking. I heard Higgins didn't practice today, mm-hmm. which because I was actually liking Higgins, mm-hmm. uh, but man. if Higgins is not practicing, especially if we don't practice tomorrow, mm-hmm. I can't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, I, I got can't cha- do I got, it. I got to change a lot of lines. And, 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 <laughs> and there's gonna be a lot of people that think that way, which means it's gonna all gravitate to most likely Chase. Yeah. You know, so he's going to almost end up being one of those type of players. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it, it's just going to be interesting how things play out. Yeah. yeah. And those mm-hmm. one-offs are really like, you know, okay, especially if they only play like one game, because you can have a dud in one game, as we've seen from Justin Jefferson, mm-hmm. and that one dud Man, goes look, off. We're going to keep talking about Justin Jefferson. <laughs> you know what? No. Give it to me, because I got to continue well, to numb myself <laughs> to it. If Minnesota, like if Minnesota gets But wait, wait, wait. That, mm-hmm. If Justin Jefferson was just scored two more points. Yeah, I know. I know. Just two more. This is a catch. Yeah. Ten yards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go out of bounds. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Man, whatever. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, I also had Buckner on that team. Mm-hmm. Who oh, missed? Man. They had an extra point where oh, the holder, yeah, yeah, holder right. for some reason couldn't hold the ball. Yeah, like he just missed the extra the point. He missed the 50-yarder. Anyways, yeah. I digress. I'll anyway. Take, I'll take the L for that one. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, what was I even going to no say? No Hawk, though? Like, no TJ Hawk? Do, do I like in, him? In the uh, in this tournament. Oh, I mean, like, yes. I'm, not, I'm not starting Justin Jefferson across the board. Yes. Yeah. You play Hawkinson. Hawkinson is the leverage play on Hell Jones. no. Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. 
How is he not the he, leverage player? It's hundred percent Justin is. Jefferson. No, no I'm saying, the board. who's the leverage player though? If you if you want to pivot away, there from is Jefferson. no leverage play. You oh wow, oh, you, no, you no, don't no, play no, Justin no, Jefferson no, at your own no, at your no, own no, will. So so for you, Justin Jefferson is one of those players. I was just talking about. Yeah, if I want to get cute, I'll get cute someplace else. I'm not getting cute with Justin Jefferson and TJ Hawkins. And Earl Smith just came back and caught a caught a couple balls last week. So I'm not getting I'm not getting cute with the. I just think he's a leverage play, but me too. I guess maybe not. So let me ask you. So if you if you feel that way, then there's no cook whatsoever. Look, no. If you, so, this is the, this is the thing about Peyton Justin Jefferson. Mm-hmm. If you think that they're gonna lose, mm-hmm. I can be okay with it because I can see one Doug game. If you don't think that they're gonna lose, I cannot be okay with it because I cannot. But see, let me say I this: I see but a play me, on that team outscoring him fair. two weeks. But let in me a row. ask you this: yeah. and me, if I do fade him, I'm but, not fading him for Hawkinson. I may go somebody like KJ. Oliver. But let me ask you this: mm. the last two games of the season, he kind of had Doug games. Week 17 and week 18, he scored less than 10 points. Yeah. And week week seventy he had two points. Mm-hmm. Week eighteen he had, and that's again they need to. Uh, that's again they need to win. We get. Eh, they said they said they said the players like and like I think uh, sometime at some point in the third quarter. Okay, well both games they st- because they were winning I think. Yeah, it was, I but don't both know. games I, they were trying to win. At least they were going they were out there trying and to win. But it wasn't like I mean I don't I don't know. I'm just saying it's not impossible to I see. I just like yeah, I like the Giants. I like that. I like that matchup for Justin Jefferson. I don't you know that to me that's. Uh, so let me ask you this. Vikings this week to beat the Giants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You pretty have conviction on that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they lose, but I'm not, I'm definitely not taking the Giants. Is there any game. any matchup this week, fellas, that y'all are kind of like almost like you're not you're still trying to have an internal decision to make who's going to win that game? Or y'all are pretty oh, certain Jags about Jags and Chargers. The Jags and Chargers. For I thought me you were confident the in the Jags. I mean, I'm I'm picking the Jags, but like yeah, I can see the Jags losing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What about you? Uh, that's a uh, Dallas Bucks game for me. Dallas yeah. Bucks yeah. is another one. Yeah, yeah. That one. That, that's a tough one. Yeah, yeah. Those. That yeah. one I got to figure out. Yeah, I think um, the Vikings and um, Giants. Giants. Yeah. Yeah. I can see Giants keeping it close, especially because that, like, you know, we talked about it, you know, throughout the year. The defense, you know, very disciplined. Like they're mm-hmm. very, very disciplined. They play hard. The team plays like, hard. Yeah, the team yeah. plays mm-hmm. hard. Uh, Daniel Jones goes in there and doesn't make a lot of mistakes, and you know, who knows what. Let's, Minnesota defense is going to show up. And let's not forget, Kirk Cousins be having these mm-hmm. games where he's just yeah. like, it's just but not they're playing working. At home. But they're playing at home, though, too. So. But I think they say Kirk Cousins is only good in noon games, and they're playing at like three. Let's also not forget <laughs> that they're also like using Dalvin Cook like – the Cowboys use Zeke now, right. essentially, but that's just between I, the tackles. I was, so, yeah, like, they're not yeah, very yeah. dynamic, you know, like yeah. they're running back. I mean, so. that's just the team where I can see the Giants pulling that off. And if yeah, the Giants absolutely. pull that off, those teams you fade the Giants is gonna hurt. Now I'm not trying to sway you at all. Yeah. I'm just saying that, like when you said that, yeah, my, yeah, I was yeah. like, "Oh, Abby, you sure?" Yeah, That's yeah, what I was yeah. thinking a little bit. Now, I gotta, the I teams gotta, you fade have to be surefire losses. I think. I think like out of all my teams, I probably got about fifty percent share of Barkley. So it's okay, not, yeah, I'm not fading uh, how the many Giants. Teams? Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, don't got that many teams. I think right okay. now, I think I got seven. Okay, you yeah, know, right, right, you know, okay. Right. We'll see how we we'll see where that finishes. <laughs> so like y'all are not going through. So all right, all right. So we all no no. We all built like a playoff. Like who we think is gonna make it to the Super Bowl. A whole bracket, yeah. Like, y'all like a whole bracket. Yeah. Y'all didn't use the bracket to determine who you were gonna pick. It does not matter. For I me, do. it does not matter. To me, it I matters do, yeah. because I'm looking at the matchups and who I think is gonna be. So, but you also have the Jags when you got the Cowboys going to the to the Super Bowl. Yeah, and that could happen. This is why it doesn't matter because like bang, it bang. could happen. But who? But, but that's like, in, only but, on one team though. So that's, what? That's one team that like. But I if this is what for. you have, and you have three teams. No, are you saying you got three different then brackets, it or that's your only bracket? And you made all your teams. That's the bracket that like I kind of like hope win. Like that's the one that like you send the people to. Oh, is that so is that the bracket so you used to make all your you teams? Three, no, so no, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't. Then it doesn't matter how many. You didn't use you didn't use you didn't use this bracket to construct all of your teams. Right? He's, he's, he's saying his teams are all hit. They're all hitched matter. to some extent. But yeah, if like it plays out this way, this team is good. You, you got to roster this players way. that only play one game. Okay? Yes, it doesn't. It, we've seen, and it's not just last year too. You don't have to have a quarterback that plays four games or even three games to win. Only we've seen because that last of the kill. Only because of the kill situation. But yeah, that's true. So I think also part of that is just how how high of a ceiling Josh Allen has. Don't forget he did throw like a million touchdowns in that Chiefs playoff game. And he got the Dolphins' pass defense, which is atrocious. That game. The interesting thing about that game is don't I wouldn't be surprised if they have that game won so early that they just run the ball 
Mm-hmm. A fair amount and not yeah. put you know put their feet to because yeah. they're gonna have a, a big game the next week. Yeah, the one the you one know? thing I would say about that and sometimes it doesn't matter because you get late in the game, game's over. But uh, Miami does have a pretty good, decent you know decent uh, run defense. Mm-hmm. Run so defense, that, yeah. So that may be okay. you know they're like a pass funnel. So that's a situation where you know even late in the game they up by like. 15, I just I just think like let's or, say a scenario plays out. They're, they're starting Skylar Thomas, right? That's where everybody – Skylar yeah. Thompson. Tom Thompson yeah. It's not going to be two of Bridgewater. Said it's, Thomas. it's still no yeah. respect. Bridgewater, I know, right? <laughs> Bridgewater is most likely going to be out. Yeah. So there's a scenario where Skylar is just so bad, you know, fumbles, pick six, you know. Bills D just scores like two or three touchdowns. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, and then it's like Josh Allen like, shoot. You know, okay. When I have a player on a team on offense, right, mm-hmm. And something like that happens, a pick six or a strip fumble for a uh, return. Or Naheem Hines. Yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> so I'll be so mad. And then when they when they show the quarterback on the sideline all happy, yeah. what the fuck you happy about? <laughs> We're supposed to be scoring fantasy points. Because I know in that instance, most likely he's not going to go as hard anymore because now he already baked points. So, anyway, I'm just – I'm going on a little tangent there, but – yeah, nah, man. But, like, I definitely built a bracket and kind of use that. Not this Cowboys bracket. Like, that's just my, like. But if this is what you think and no, you didn't construct, that means it does not sometimes matter. Sometimes you make a bracket, like, to be, like, it's almost like tweets. Like, just because you tweet something doesn't mean that you actually believe in a tweet. No, it's I don't like know. No, no, be... no, 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 no. Abby is not accepting <laughs> that analogy. <laughs> no. Please come again with no, a different no, one. <laughs> if I say it. something, I believe it. If I construct something, I believe it. All right, well, then you ain't going to get If I say this, bracket, that's what I believe. I'll say this. I made a bracket as well, mm-hmm. but all my teams are off that bracket. Oh, yeah, see, so you know. Yeah, because I have that much, much conviction. Because I, I really believe in tell yourself a story, yeah. And if you want to hit this tournament, your story has to play out. Yeah. I yeah. guess the way that I yeah, – that's, that's simple. Yeah. And the way that I started, too, was like I was like, all right, I don't think these teams are going to win their games. Mm-hmm. So just kind of excluded them. And But also, I, you know, I'm okay fading the players on these teams because the chances of them like really putting up a big game I think is on the lower end. I love you. Mm-hmm. I may have one Tyler Lockett team, but for the most part, like I'm okay fading that. This second person has brought up Lockett today. Oh yeah, Tyler. Like, I think Walker shouldn't be just. I mean, I know it's the Niners' defense, but yeah. I think they played the Niners not too long ago. And he still scored double digit points. Yeah. I think they just use him just so much. And this is where I, this is why it matters too. And this is why I have just like a couple teams with a couple of those outliers. If the Giants lose and everybody rosters Barkley, and the Seahawks lose, they both play one game. Mm-hmm. Is it really out of the realm of possibility that Tyler Lockett? Or DK Metcalf or Kenneth Walker outscore Barkley, right? No. Or anybody from any other team that loses that you don't roster. Another guy. That's a good way. To another look guy. Up, yeah. J.K. Dobbins. Because I think Gus Edwards may not play. He he was banged up. He was in the con- concussion protocol. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. You know. These typically go two weeks now. So now you got J.K. Dobbins, and yeah, he doesn't normally catch passes. But what if this is a game where he catches three passes? Mm-hmm. I have. A, he hasn't really looked good to me, but he's been producing. You don't have. Mm-hmm. You don't have any concern with Drake. Say what? King Drake, still you know my thing? thoughts on Drake. Yeah. yeah, he show up when you don't, when you when you least need him. Yeah, I, I say that as the guy who won. Me I'm, just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying he could be a hindrance. But even that, but or like a Mark Andrews or whatever, because I know yeah. a lot of people won't be more, uh, you know, uh, uh, the roster and roster. the Ravens. Is it really? Out of, and, and the Bengals really okay. don't play that well against a tight end. And I'll say this: last time Andrews played the tight end, eight for nine, eight. I think receptions for like 90 yards, mm-hmm. tight end premium, that's decent. That, was, that, that, that could easily happen. And then we saw what Isaiah Likely did last week. Mm-hmm. So there are a lot of guys on these teams that are just like, don't roster them because they won't win a game. But they could easily outscore the guys so, that you are rostering that's gonna, that, that also are going to win still a game. Lose, yeah, yeah, that's so, why I said it does not matter. So wait, I was matter. talking to um, somebody yesterday. Or maybe it was today. Mm-hmm. Yesterday, it was yesterday. And I, I was talking about Andrew specifically. Yeah. I truly feel like, okay, so I think most people are going to assume the Ravens are going to lose this game, especially yeah. at once Lamar is, you know, named out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. People are just going to say the Ravens are going to lose. And then, obviously, that's going to make a segment of people just not – either not roster Ravens or roster them in the defensive kicker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But for the segment of, of players that do decide to roster them as a flex player – This guy right here. I mm-hmm. truly feel like it is almost 90% or higher that that player is going to be Andrews. So far? Correct. I, I truly, truly believe that. Okay. Um, so I don't think it's as unique as what you would typically expect 
because the people that do, because there's going to be people that do decide, I want to be different. I'm going to play a Raven skill player. Mm -hmm. And I feel like all those people or most of those people are all going to say yeah. the Raven skill player I pick is Andrews. Yeah. But I don't need to be, I don't need to be in the like one percentile. Right, 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 right. I just need right. to be like in the twentieth percentile right, right, when it comes to that. Yeah, and then like the rest of my yeah, lineup yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. I think the reason that we were I was talking about it was because the person I was talking to about felt like that would make their their team unique. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I said not so much because if it was a team where it had a bunch of options, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, like the Seahawks. Yeah, mm -hmm. great example. Yeah. Lockett, Metcalf, Walker. Mm -hmm. You know, Geno. Yeah. If you play a Seahawk, it can really be like four yeah. different people. Yeah. So the way the way that I'm approaching it is like, okay, I'll get me an Andrews team, and then I'll play a Bucks player because mm -hmm. you can go a lot of way with a Bucks player. Mm -hmm. You can go Godwin, you can yeah. go Fournette. I don't Evans. know if some people are gonna play Evans. Yeah, so somebody like, might play Rashad White. That would be written. I, I couldn't do that. It's not a terrible play though. I'm not saying I mean, it's a terrible play, yeah. but because the the well, the Cowboys are unique now because they they are kind of banged up in the secondary. So I think they got, you know, they got one good corner right now that left. That's why I'm kind of like, you know, for the most part, maybe fading Evans a little bit. But, like, the secondary corners are hurt. And you've been able to run on the Cowboys lately, too. So, to me, they're beatable. The defense is beatable. The defense is not a stout. They've lost a lot of bodies on that defense. Uh, so, the Bucks they spread it around. Yeah, they you do. Know? We they saw do. Evans just put up, like, do nothing for the entire year. And then when it did not matter whatsoever in week 18. Smash me one of my championship Smash. games. Yeah. Smash me. I Smash. was so pissed off. So, yeah. 48 points. Yeah. Like, yeah. what? How? So, it's, all, it's always capable. And I, 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 I do feel like it's going to be a shootout. I don't think it's going to be a defensive battle. I do feel like that's going to be a shootout. It's just whether or not the Bucks can mount enough of an offense and whether or not Dak, you know, you know, stops turning the ball over, essentially. Yeah. Now, one bit of strategy I heard recently, and, we, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I have never won anything close in this playoff challenge. So, <laughs> I'm not an expert in this, but I don't know a lot of people that have. I think it's a new contest. Maybe came yeah. out like two, three yeah. years ago. Um, so, we're all trying to figure it out as we go. But I heard one uh, good strategy is to try to – of course, we talked about the defense and kicker <laughs> and the fading teams, but um, the, player, the other players that you think might play one game, mm -hmm. play them like in the running back spot. Because I heard That's the strategy is to try to get as many pass catchers to advance mm -hmm. as possible well because they have the higher potential. Yeah. Um, and then kind of what you were saying as far as quarterback, try to find a quarterback that can play those four games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I heard strategy is. We'll see if it works. Um, I, I do think there's always going to be that edge in tight end, especially if they hit. Yeah. Like it just puts you so far ahead of the field. But, of course, the tight ends have to hit. Yeah. Um, I think the tight ends, people are going to look at this year. We've talked about two. We didn't talk about the third one. I think people are going to really try to roster Kittle. Yeah. Especially the ones that just want to say, I don't want to play C-Mac because everybody else is playing C-Mac. Mm -hmm. um, and how kiddos look recently. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a discussion to be had because Debo's back. Yep. And we don't know how Debo's going to affect him. Mm -hmm. But we'll see. Especially in the playoffs. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I, it's going to be interesting how this all thing plays out. And I, I don't even think it's a thing where it's one specific strategy is the best strategy. Mm -hmm. I think it might really be a thing where every season is so different. You just happen to have to pick the right strategy for that season. Yeah. Or just got lucked out. You lucked out on, like, picking the right player that the field didn't. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. You know? luck, yeah, luck definitely is going to have to play a part of it. Yeah. You know what's up? So. Oh, real quick. We're about to end, I'm sure, right? Yes, sir. You, you got that look. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm about to do my little, <laughs> yeah. I'm about, well, thank you for it. No. <laughs> so, real quick. Let's just put it out there. Super yeah. Bowl picks. Yes. I know you mentioned one. Mm -hmm. You ain't even got to say the winner unless you want to say the winner. Cowboys and who, who you see in the AFC? Chiefs. Chiefs. Mm -hmm. What about you? Or you want me to go next? You go next. I think it's going to be the Niners and the Bengals. Oh, that was my pick. Oh, I mean, it was, it was what is Dale going to say? Yeah, that's me too. Oh, yeah. Actually, no, 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 no. It wasn't. It was the uh, Eagles and the Bengals. It okay. sure was. And then I got the and I had the uh, Eagles as the uh, winner. As the winner. As the winner. As the winner. As the winner. Yeah. Who are you picking as the winner? I haven't really made a decision yet. Oh, I, th on, I think. Go. I think I'm going to probably go to Niners. No, Niners. What? Ricky quarterback. I know. I, it's, that's the only thing that's yeah. like making me hesitant. Nah, last but, like the last pick. Yeah, literally the irrelevant. Last pick. Mystery irrelevant. Yeah, something about that team, man. No, no, I'm not buying it. I don't know. I saw, I saw him throw a touchdown. He's last looked game, good, bro. And my man's, my man's was like, I got. I put it in my <laughs> he literally head. said, I got ice in my <laughs> like, and it went, and it was how he did it too. He was the swag. With yeah, it. yeah. I mean, it was. He made like, you a believer a little no, bit. He was like, bro, was like. 
Come on. You know what it is. Hey, y'all know that, they were like, you know what it is. Y'all, like. y'all know that meme where a dude is like sitting back and they be like, sis four? That's what Abby yeah. sounded like. Wait, Wait what? Okay. <laughs> okay. I said, uh, I on DiCaprio. I hit like. the 15-second rewind like five times. <laughs> Uh, he, he, he's looked really good, oh, man. man. Yeah, like, if you didn't yeah. know anything about him, if you were just watching this guy, no, man, I'm upset that like we didn't come up with that like in high school or, or like middle school because right. I literally would have done that with every single play. Rebound. <laughs> no, I would have done the class. <laughs> oh shoot, I got an A. <laughs> Every single, it don't matter what we did. I got know. the digits. <laughs> I got the digits. I Let's go. I the digits. All right, man. That's our episode for this week. Yeah, Please man. like. Hey, good subscribe. luck. Y'all yeah, play all yeah, challenges, yeah. man. We're out. Yeah. Shout out to Fan Up. Yeah, shout yeah. out to Fan Up. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right, man. We're out.